have uh, uh, indigenous uh, heritage myself. Uh, my great grandmother is uh, Algonquin from the northern part of Ontario. And growing up, my uh, um, my father and, and mother, we went camping many, many of the weekends. My uh, grandfather uh, lived in Saskatchewan and had a trap line. Mm -hmm. So they would send me back there in the summertime and I would spend time in his trap line. And my other grandparents, they had a summer home over on Saturna Island in the Gulf Islands. And so they sent me over there as well. So I got, you know, uh, the combination of all things, you know, very, very connected to nature. And so when I finished my high school, it was a natural progression to enter and I'd do a, I did a technical degree in forestry and then worked for many years and then eventually went to university and got my Bachelor of Science in Forestry. Before the travel, uh, after I began my consulting business in the, in the early 1990s, I had the opportunity to work with uh, First Nation communities uh, across British Columbia, uh, mostly in the Fraser Valley. And uh, after gaining, um, they got to know me. And uh, when they were at the treaty table in the beginning of the 2000s, the Stolo Nation asked me to uh, to be an advisor um, related to natural resources, um, forests and fish and other things of that nature. And that's how I got to know uh, many of the um, First Nation communities. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when they got to know me at the treaty table, um, they invited me to work on other projects in their communities and it just expanded from there. Yeah. Uh, as you sometimes notice in, uh, when uh, Aboriginal people introduce themselves, mm -hmm. you know, they give the name of their mother and father, mm -hmm. their grandfather and grandmother and their great-grandfather and grandmother if they know it. And that starts the, the conversation as to who they are. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that aspect uh, is part of the journey uh, that this canoe family was particularly keen to um, embrace and teach the youth and then have them share. I was still made very, very welcome by all the people from the canoe family. And I only, you know, there were a hundred in the family. I maybe knew five of those people before the journey started, but I was made to feel very, very welcome by all the others. And then the larger group, you know, the hundred canoe families, you know, my good fortune of working, you know, 30, 40 years on coastal BC, um, I knew um, those communities, I'd been to those communities, uh, I knew people in those communities, I even knew people who were um, there and along on the, on the travel. So I got to I, you know, enter into conversations with those people and those people introduced me to other people and since I was, you know, a bit more free, I didn't have to stay with my canoe family um, in the evenings and the day. I got to, you know, hang out with uh, other, uh, the other families and got to know many, many people very well and I was always made very, very welcome at every uh, opportunity that was there. Yeah in the the pulling mm -hmm. you have you know you have 12 people the two lead um, pullers put their paddles in the water first mm -hmm. but everyone uh, the paddles are going in and out of the water so rapidly everyone must be in synchronicity yeah. so even the youth that were paddling mm -hmm. I mean everyone has to be putting the paddles in the water at ex not it goes from the lead um, and then the second and then the third all the way to the sixth seat in the in the in the canoe mm -hmm. um, So as the uh, all paddles are put in synchronicity and sometimes um, The skipper will call for a little bit of extra energy mm -hmm. and fast paddles so or maybe do you know 20 uh, or more paddles um, that are at pretty well the fastest pace that you can lift the paddle in and out of the water yeah. and even though the canoe is 55 feet long mm -hmm. you know the bow of the canoe rises when all those paddles go in the water together and it creates a you know a, a fair wake behind yeah. it as well so there's an incredible amount of time mm -hmm. to give thought to 
you know, one's life and, uh, you know, you're surrounded by this amazing ocean and nature and uh, it's just a, a perfect opportunity to, to be free. Um, and uh, I guess you could call it, you know, potentially like a meditative state uh, where you can definitely go deep into You have to concentrate and make sure you put your paddle in. But apart from that, you can definitely be, uh, you know, very, very connected to, to nature and spirit and, you know, be thinking about, you know, what does it mean, the connection to one's ancestors, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the history and, you know, you can imagine and think all kinds of uh, amazing things out there on the water. Yeah.